Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokus Mystery. This will be part 409. We're continuing with our lesson title, Division of Authority. This will be part 2. Scripture teaches the Prototokus group will be divided into two groups. The kings who will drive out the Luciferians from control of the creation and the priests who will impart the fullness of the knowledge of God into those who inhabit it. So in Revelation 5 verses 9 to 10. <clears throat> Revelation 5, verses 9 to 10. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. So they're standing, <clears throat> or they're sitting around the throne, declaring their testimony to God about their origin and their purpose, their origin is they're taken from the earth out of every race, cultural group, <coughs> uh, tribe, and kindred, brought, redeemed, glorified. And then verse 10, they give their use, their, the purpose. And it's made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth. And actually in the Greek it's saying reign over the earth. So they're stating their understanding of the Father's plan for them. And now they are ready to enter into what the Father has for them in the fullness of sonship. Which brings us to the next principle. Scripture indicates upon return to the earth with the Lord... The kings will immediately begin to assault the Luciferian strongholds. Mm -hmm. Daniel, the seventh chapter, verse 18. <clears throat> but the saints of the Most High is referring to the kings, the elder group shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever even forever and ever so the elder group is going to capture the creation <clears throat> dispose of the Luciferians and turn it over into the hands of the priests. Now we find that they leave heaven as one glorious, <coughs> triumphant army, well actually a series of armies, but grouped together. Revelation 19 verses 17 verses 11 to 14. Revelation 19, 11 to 14. <clears throat> And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness doth he judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no man knew but he himself. 
and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood and his name is called the word of God so we see he has many names <coughs> and the armies armies in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen clean and white and talks about out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that with it he should smite the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron and he treads the winepress of the fiercest of the wrath of God. So he initiates the return to earth to take on the Luciferians on earth, under the earth, beyond the earth, in all areas of the creation. Which scripture we see him returning with 10,000 or 20,000? Do you see him returning with 10,000 or 20,000? Mm, I seem to recall reading somewhere in that uh, period of time. The Tens of thousands and thousands of thousands. No, that's, that's Revelation 5 9. There's a scripture in there's Psalms which talks about <coughs> the chariots of God are 10,000. That's probably what I'm thinking of. Okay. Well, I'm talking about Elohim, um, YVH. Okay, so it's not Elohim. All right. No, that's not his return to earth here. It's far more. The 10,000. Now we find when he gets to earth, what will happen is he is assigned the directive of what the armies are going to break up into their assigned attack modes. We see this turn to Isaiah, mm. 13th chapter. Scripture indicates the armies will be in companies which have common character traits. Isaiah 13. Starting in verse 1 to 3. <coughs> Can I ask a question first? Sure. Praise the Lord. Didn't we just study something about some bad spirit coming on a white horse? Yeah, that was the beast. <coughs> that was so the... So what does a white horse mean? <coughs> there is a white horse which Peace. symbolizes royalty, a conqueror, a commander what you read about what you're talking about is the beast who imitates he tries to project what is truthful what the Lord is he is an imitation he comes out on a white horse but as you read that scripture you find that what he brings is not permanent it's going to eventually be removed. What the Lord brings, the true rider on the white horse, eternal. is eternal. That's the difference between what you're thinking about and what we just read. One is a deception and the other is the truth. The world is going to be fooled by the deceiver and come under judgment. The righteous are going to follow the true rider on the white horse and go on to victory. It's a great question, Georgia. Thank you for asking. And you will know the difference when you're going through it. Yes. You <coughs> will be led through it. But that's during the tribulation, isn't yes. it? Yes, you won't be here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 13, <clears throat> I'm going to start verse 1 to 3. <clears throat> the burden of Babylon, the word burden there really means uh, the uh, prophetic judgment. On Not something that she's carrying. The burden of Babylon, which Isaiah the son of Amos did see. Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain, exalt the voice unto them, shake the hand, that they may go into the gates of the nobles. I, talk about the Lord, the Father, have commanded my sanctified ones. Now the word sanctified here comes from a Hebrew term, kadas, which means dedicated. Why are they called sanctified, dedicated ones? Because in this life, that's the characteristic that they developed. Dedication, unswerving 
commitment in heaven that's the in the prototokers grouping of elders this is what they are going to constitute everybody that had that characteristic within the prototokers group <coughs> is going to be together all those that are committed that were dedicated in this life unswerving that's a reward we're talking about elders elders the bright kings okay. Okay. so he says i have commanded my sanctified ones i have also called my mighty ones for mine anger now the word mighty there comes from a hebrew term gibor which means strong so this is talking about an individual <coughs> that endures that's the characteristic he developed in the things that he experienced in this life so in the prototokos gathering all those that had developed this characteristic are going to be together <clears throat> when the lord dispatches the armies of heaven <clears throat> all those that have similar characteristics are going to use their talents in bringing about the defeat of the Luciferians. Is there any indication that there are other characteristics? Oh, yes. Many? Yes, definitely. <clears throat> I have also called my mighty ones for my anger, them that rejoice in my highness. What is he saying here? He's talking about the sanctified ones, the strong ones, all have one common characteristic. They rejoice in His majesty. In this life, they were consistently in a state of appreciation and awe of his majesty those that were dedicated those that had endurance this is the thing that they clung to the reality of who he is and his greatness so we see in this life everything you do pertains to your walk with the Lord is going to fall out into a reality which constitutes a characteristic that's connected to you you're making your eternity here in this life by the things you experience and how you relate to them how you respond to <coughs> the challenges of this life you will note there are no doubters here there's no weeping with lilies here these are individuals who went through challenges and they came through one guy was enduring the other guy was committed they all those characteristics that made them endure here in this life become their badge in eternity the thing you recognize them by that the father recognizes by and causes you calls you by yes Okay, Brother John. <clears throat> in eternity, before we were manifested as we are currently, mm -hmm. were we manifested before the creation? No. Manifested as in into the human race. Is that what you mean? I'm trying to... I'm actually hearing, I think... We were created, and he brings the creation together, and it is custom designed for our attributes when we when we get to work. I see what you mean. When you said a creation, <coughs> I'm assuming you were, you were referring to the first creation, some say, which some manifested say. everything. Right. <coughs> Out of the first creation, <coughs> God calls and he makes the ones that he calls sons sits them around his throne and then engages with the firstborn son 
his plan for establishing this creation. So I'm thinking of Psalm 33, 6, where he creates the creation, the primary creation, and the host of them at the same time. Yeah, it's us. It's us. And then from that, they go into the, they, we go into the secondary creation. No, which from, no, no. From that, they go to be with the Father for an extended yes, of period. The, well, there is no secondary creation. I, I, I took that as red <laughs> because I was thinking the manifestation he was talking about was mm -hmm. coming into the human experience. Mm -hmm. That was what I was I think, thinking. Yeah. Uh, setting the stage for that, though, <clears throat> the reason that you have what you have now is because after the sons were called, after they're seated in the presence of the Father, the Father and the Son get together and desire to make a situation where these sons will qualify to be equal with his only begotten son. Right, right. The established well in order to do this, this and this and right, this right. has to happen. Same place. <clears throat> so it's a plan that the Father, because you notice that Paul when he talks about this, he makes a differentiation before the foundation of the world, yes. after no. the foundation yes. of the world. Yes. The, the reason for that is because the Father is engineering his master plan, which <clears throat> the conditions that he wanted to engineer took a long, long time. So that when the signs incarnate into this situation, the conditions are prepared for each one to develop what we just talked about. You go through a path, you go through a path that's going to bring out in you what the Father has put within you. <clears throat> I will, it, it, the scripture talks about <clears throat> they are going to be gold tried in the fire. Okay. You're going to go in there, flesh and blood, yes. you're going to come out, yielded vessel, fit for the command that is waiting for you, the position is waiting for you in the heavens. So coming back to the characteristics, I imagine that the dedication, or the dedicated mm -hmm. and the strong, those characteristics must also be appear for the priests. Sure, certainly. Mm. Everybody is being developed to bring out what the Father has put within them. Each one is unique. If we are faithful to the call, mm. <clears throat> you're going to come out of this thing totally prepared for what the Father has meant for you to be. Now we know something about how their attitude is. Verse 4. A noise, a sound of a multitude in the mountains like as of a great people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together, the Lord of hosts mustereth the host of the battle. So what we find out is the impression you're getting here is that these groups of kings are eager, eager to enter into conflict with the Lucifer. They got a bone to pick Absolutely. with these guys Absolutely. and it's been held off as far as they're concerned it's been held off for too long way too long <laughs> <laughs> and they're ready to uh, run roughshod yes, over every yes, single yes. The, the war god they're going to put him down they're going to put all these other guys down because they are now prepared are you yes. speaking primarily about the kings or the kings and priests the kings here, yes, <clears throat> because the, the the task that's been given for them <clears throat> is a task that uh, they know exactly how to take to, care, to how to right. deal with. But that would be the attitude of the Presbyterians in general, anyway. Sure, know? yes, the priests are already in action. Sure, they were in action during the tribulation period with the same attitude. That's why when you have the temple priest, pillar priest, he has been engineered by the things he has experienced on earth for that position right. <clears throat> verse 5 they come from a far country from the end of heaven the Lord and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land so there are prepared army each one knows what he's going to do 
each one has single out its target and now they're in attack mode and they're you know being released to go and deliver the creation <coughs> let's go on <coughs> Scripture teaches the priests will be the instructors of men and angels and all the inhabitants of all creations. Isaiah 30, verse 20 to 21. <clears throat> And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity, the water of affliction, this is referring to Israel. At the time of the Lord's coming, they've gone through the tribulation period, gross affliction, <coughs> literally gone through hell. Though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore. The word removed into a corner merely means hidden. <clears throat> but thine eyes shall see thy teachers <clears throat> and thine ears shall hear a word behind thee saying this is the way walk ye in it when you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left now what we find here is a principle starting in the tribulation period <clears throat> the prototokos that are assigned to be the instructors the directors of the earth will start in the tribulation period. So should we understand that the teachers here are not Jewish teachers? Well, they might be Jewish teachers, but would be Protodicus priests. They're going to be Protodicus, yeah. At this time? Yes. Okay. Yes, definitely. But what you're going to see <clears throat> is they have started already. In other words, he's talking about getting a voice behind you. That voice is in heaven. Talking to this guy on earth. I'll give you an example of it. Turn to Revelation 18, verse 4 to 8. While they're going through tribulation, the teachers are talking to them. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, <coughs> Come out of her, my people. So this voice is in the temple talking to a group on the earth that are in a region that's destined for judgment. So the voice saying, Come out of her, my people, is not only addressing the church, but also the Jews. He's addressing the humans. In, okay. In, in, uh, in totality. So at this point, there is no distinction between those who are Jews and those who are Jewish. Okay. This is the Lord Jesus Christ. No, it's the Protestant teaching. The Protestant teachers are in gear before the elders. It's interesting. He's calling them my people, which is the people of the saints. Yes. 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 And I heard another voice from heaven saying, so he's talking directly to these people. This is a pillar angel. Because he's given the authority to make pronouncements in the name of God. That's why he can call them my people. Mm. He's making a directive as a son with the authority given to him from the Father on all the inhabited regions of all creations. He can do this any, and you will see where he's doing it in the heavens as well as the earth. Mm. <clears throat> Not only is giving them direction, he's giving them understanding, revelation. Notice what he talks about. Heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that she be not partakers of her sins, 
<clears throat> that you received not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven and God. So he's given reverence to the Father. God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you. Double unto her, double according to her works. In the cup which she hath filled, fill to her double. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously, so how much torment and sorrow give her, for she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. So he's giving a whole rendition about the truth of the reality that these people are in and what is going to happen to them unless they exit. What does that mean, exit? They can't go out physically. What they do is cease from the things that perpetuate this thing. Whatever it is that they're doing that enables this thing to function, he's saying, you stop, you come out of her, you cease to support her. Okay. Because if you don't, you're going to be judged with her. Yes. Is this a Prototokos teacher speaking in a collective manner for all the Prototokos teachers? No, this is a Prototokos teacher speaking with the authority that he's been given by the spirit that's in him. So when he says a my people, group. does that mean all people? I mean, a part of the people, or just the ones... People that pertain to him. Okay, all right, yeah. But back up a second. This is the unified voice of the Patrick Sanctuary. The group is given the name of God in their being. That was my it's first a question. unified voice. It's not an individual Patrick priest. Not, it's not all Patrick I get it. priests. The it's the priest, it's the temple, <clears throat> pillar angel who has the name of God in him. That unified voice, yes. Revelation 3.12 is what you're talking yes. about. Okay. Yes, yes. Not all priests. Sure. The, the custodial angels that are in the book of Revelation right. are not included sure. in this. The other priests are not included. Only that one who's the authority to speak because he's got the Father's name etched in him has the authority to do what he's doing. Now let me ask you this. Since you've agreed that this is the people of the saints that he's talking to, or the unified voice is talking to. The Jews at this point are still Jews, mm -hmm. and they are not peoples of the saints, is that true? Uh, no, they're not. So therefore, he's talking to the church? Yes. And not to the Jews, because the Jews, until such time as they become messianic only um, only receive the new earth uh, they're not <clears throat> they're not part of this not for that reason they're not part of they're not part of this because they are still going through hell at the hands of the beast they're not included in he's talking to those under the harlot city that they're about ready to destroy he says come out of her we're going to wipe her out. The Jews are undergoing something different, At that which time. later on, this is the harlot city, this is the time of the Antichrist, okay. or the beast. Okay. So he's talking to people that are right at this particular junction of the Father's master plan. The Jews you're referring to, they wouldn't speak to at this point because they're it's not too, going to be open to hear it. So let me just, let me just finish ahead, this point. The behavior that the unified voice is referring to is to stop being trafficked and doing the work that the Harlot City perpetuates. That's the same behavior as Revelation 12 verse 11, where the group who've been taken up into the heavens said, look, we've had enough, we're not doing this anymore. Chop our heads off, here's the testimony of Jesus Christ, and as a result, the enemy is cast down. Yes. So, what I'm asking you is, is this the same group, or are these two different groups performing the same behavior? Different, different groups. But, but each performing the same behavior. Okay. The, per the principle is the same. Right. Yes. Okay. Brother Jones, it sounds to me, and correct me, I know you will, 
that a Protonica saint is doing the job of YHVH? Uh, no. Okay, YHVH right. never had this authority. So is YHVH <laughs> being schooled as this is happening? Sure. Yes. Sure. Yes. They're coming, he's coming to an understanding of the position of the sons of God. Right. Well, that raises another question. At the point that the sons of God <clears throat> take over ownership and rulership, bearing in mind that YHVH was the God of the Jews and not the God of anybody else, does YHVH, does his remit after the sons of God have taken over extend to all of humanity? Does does the YHVH remit, YHVH is used to do certain things by the sons of God. Mm -hmm. Is YHVH's remit at that time, does it cover all of humanity, or is he still related purely to the Jews? It's only going to be related to the Jews. Okay. <clears throat> then after that, he's basically out of the picture because the Jews are going to come under the total influence of Elohim. Right. And YHVH, along with the other angelic groups, <clears throat> are going to find themselves in regime change, mm. <clears throat> totally under the sons of God. What will they do if they're not performing the administrative and directorship activities? What will they do? What well, will the YHVH do in uh, around the time of the Great White Throne, for example? Well, everything's going to change. Okay. For the, the millennial reign is going to be a restoration of things that God had orig originally designed that never happened because of sin. YHVH and the angels are going to be reassigned in a reestablished, re refurbished creation. So they're going to be doing things then that they don't have an understanding of now because the Father hasn't revealed it, either to them or the sons. What is happening now is that we are being prepared to assume the position of authority that waits us. When we assume that position, then we will know what their status is we'll and what. And at that point, done. all uh, <coughs> created angels will relinquish the authority of guardianship, holding his estates in, in, in his behalf, oh, yeah. ministering, all of those things yeah. will, will well, no longer well, Everything's right. going to change. <coughs> I'm seeing the British rule where the, the, the kid is being brought up until you know, because he's being molded to take the king position. Yes, at the age of majority, absolutely correct. Right. Yeah, that's exactly what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. But let's go on. So we see that the the Prototokos angels are already in vogue mm -hmm. before the elders assert their authority. They don't get their authority position until they come back to earth. To set up the kingdom. The angels are already teaching, instructing, directing, because <clears throat> their their call, their place is above those of the elder groups yes. Yes. as it pertains to the creation. Sure. So where the fathers designed it. Which brings us to our next <clears throat> Revelation 12, 10 to 12, they also give revelation to the heavens. <coughs> Praise the Lord. Just amazing. Yes. Amazing. <laughs> Amen, Brother, Brother Chris. <laughs> <laughs> revelation 12? Yes, 10 to 12. <coughs> And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accuses them before our God Same. day and night. Now I believe this is the whole Prototokos priest uh, uh, group okay. giving revelation to the creation. R okay, okay. That's you don't see anything where it refers to my people. Right. It's referring to our brethren, so mm. it's it's a broader re relationship that's okay. being said. They're identifying with these people. So that unified voice is the priesthood, as opposed to just the pillarhood, for example. Yes. Right. Yes. 
and they, our brethren, overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. So this is a voice of those that are in a supremely high um, estate, talking to lower estates. Right. Yeah. So it's the implication that those in, in uh, verse 11, those who overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, mm -hmm. are instigated, motivated, and established by the unified voice in verse 10. They hear the unified voice in verse 10 mm -hmm. and react as, as a result. No, because the voice, the, the, the voice here is talking about something that already happened. They overcame him. They did this. They were not... <coughs> afraid to give their testimony. Agreed. But in verse 10 it says, and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now it's come the time of salvation. Yes. And the question is, does verse 11, is verse 11 activated by verse 10, by them hearing the, the words in verse 10? No. <clears throat> verse 10 is talking about what's taking place after what happened in verse 11. Okay. Devil's kicked out. Uh, heavens are now purified from the evil this is what you do this way is instructing okay. them in the lower heavens right. because of things that have already happened in that respect they're giving revelation well what do we do what, what's is explaining right. basically something that took place and as a result of that the benefits that now are theirs to experience Rejoice now because this and this and this and this has happened. You don't have to worry about these things anymore. He's also talking about the, directly down to the people of the earth matrix and the sea. Beware, behold, uh, he's coming down to wipe you out. He's got great wrath. People of earth, people of the sea. So there's all encompassing. Wherever the creation is, the priests have access to instruct to give revelation to create conditions explain conditions they are now the explainers of the reality that exists throughout the creation because the, the, the inhabitants don't understand they've been in darkness they need instruction to give them a, a degree of stability direction. Mm -hmm. The priests do this.